when did I, I understand. Take the picture. Oh, when did I take the picture for the bobblehead? I don't know. I didn't, uh, uh, that was actually the same day, honestly, that we did the pictures in the video that we, that we showed before the, before the games, and they just used the same picture, so. So what do you think? I think it's cool. I think they did a good job. The hairline is bad. I don't have any hair. At least I have more hair on here. It's a little bit more. <laughs> How many you've had? I, a bunch of these, I'm sure, done before. Yeah, in the NBA, and um, they've all been cool. Do this time in the suit, the first time in the suit. Well, this time, the first time in the suit. Yeah. Do, do you have them? Like, do you have? I don't. No. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cherish this one, though, if I can get one. Okay. <laughs> Isaiah said that... Uh, he feels like there's a lot more to come, you know, based on what he did the other night, but that maybe he was holding back a little bit at, at the start. How, how would you kind of evaluate where he was at the beginning of this and, and where you feel like he is right now? Well, I think at the beginning, anybody coming in new is trying to kind of find their way. And uh, Isaiah, we know, has, has talent, but I think he was thinking way too much, uh, getting in his own way. And now as it's getting, you know, getting more games under his belt, he's getting more comfortable. And games like the other day is only going to – you know, raise his confidence to another level. I mean, that's the talent that he has. That's the talent that we knew he was going to bring to the team. Uh, just hopefully he can just continue to come out consistently because we know he's a, he's a, good, he's a special player. For him and the big guys in general, if, if the mistakes they make come out of aggression, especially on the defensive end, are you going to be cool with that? Oh, absolutely. Anything that we can do aggressively as a team, uh, I'm all for it. You know, you're going, to bring, you're going to make mistakes, but I would love aggressive mistakes and not passive mistakes. So. Um, our bigs have to control that paint and be rim protectors, whether it's charges, whether it's block shots, whether it's even altering shots. We need them to do that. Your team didn't give up as many easy layups like they have in the past in transition. What have you done different to prevent those easy layups? Well, we've just really focused on it in practice. You know, I watch tons of tape, and it's amazing that um, the way the kids think in transition. You know, you don't talk. You don't, you don't get an opportunity to, to communicate to your teammate who has the ball, who has the next man in line. So. We've been really working on taking charges and getting back in transition and talking things out. Where do you feel like everybody is with kind of understanding how they fit? How, how much of a work in progress is that still? It's been a huge work in progress, and we're still, you know, trying to, the guys are still trying to figure that out. Because early on, with me giving the green light on offense, everybody wanted to score. Nobody wanted to do the dirty work. Nobody wanted to rebound. Nobody wanted to take the charges. Nobody wanted to get on the floor 50 50 ball. So, we were losing all the tough categories at first because guys were trying to do too much offense. But now, eight games in, guys are starting to figure out, if I'm going to play, I have to do this. And we've told them before, but now they're, now they're starting to listen, and it's kicking in now, and it's making us a better team. How, how has Lomax developed over the last couple of weeks as, a, as your point guard on this team? Well, Alex came in uh, this year really trying to score the ball. That's something that he's never tried to do in the past. Uh, I didn't take that away from him. I just saw it not being his game. And I think they kind of knocked him off kilter a little bit because he's a pure point guard. He gets everybody else involved, you know, takes open shots and, uh, and does his, his thing in transition. So uh, I think he's starting to settle into who he really is now instead of trying to just be the scorer. I think the scoring will come because we give him the right to shoot the ball. It's just he, think he can't go out there searching for it. Has to run the team first and then take your opportunities when you can. Still no update on Lance? No update on Lance. You said before that Antoine's a little bit behind on knowing everything. Mm -hmm. Say by the time you get to the start of conference play, is that kind of the goal for him to have caught up and be fully integrated? Well, the goal really is for him to any day now we need you because he's honestly our, our biggest guard, of course. He's our most talented offensive guard for sure, and he's, he's probably our best playmaking guard. But uh, with him being on the floor, he can only play limited minutes because of the schemes and the things that we have going. Uh, as a coach, I'll try to find ways to keep him out there offensively. But defensively, he has to know the rotations. He has to understand. And he has to rebound. You know, at 6'5", he has to rebound the ball for us as well. But we really need it now. But obviously, we need it before we go into conference. Do you have a, a it's sort of settling into a rotation? But for example, how you play Kareem or Antoine mm -hmm. or the Biggs, or do, you, do you have a set rotation in, in mind? Or how, how do you Initial think it's important as a player to sort of know what the rotation is? Initially, yes, we have the rotation where Kareem, Antoine, and uh, Keevan are going to come off the bench. And uh, they know that every time around the 16-minute mark or whatever, they're going to come in, 15. Uh, the rest of the game depends on them, how sharp they are uh, being attentive to our game plan. Defensively, if they're taking too many chances, gambling too much, not rebounding, not taking charges when they had an opportunity to. Uh, so it all kind of boils into that as far as the entire group. 
uh, how they play, how much they play. Um, what is the UAV team and what are they like? Are they similar to anybody who faced this season? Well, you know what? Honestly, uh, they're kind of similar to us. They're, uh, the stats are really uh, eerie, sim you know, similar because they shoot a lot of threes, but they don't, they're not really making them. But all the threes that they take are wide open. Doesn't, doesn't mean that they're not capable. Uh, defense, uh, offensively, their guards lead their, lead their show. They got really good guards. And, uh, you know, their bigs have to do it by committee as far as coming out and trying to, you know, take the challenge on the offensive end and then being rim protectors on the defensive end. So, but their guards, as they go, the, guard, the guards go. So they're just like us. You know, it's kind of similar. What do you think about all these people getting to the game super early to get a bobblehead of, of your image? What oh, that's, that's pretty cool, man. That's just, that's just God. That's just, honestly, just, I'm humbled by the fact that I'm even a coach to be able to have bobbleheads. You know, everybody knows about Little Penny, but to have a coach bobblehead, I never thought I'd have that. So um, it's pretty cool, though, that, that people even want, the, uh, even want that item. Has, has Tyler taken a three yet that you looked at it as he was doing it and said that's too far? Yes. <laughs> yes, it did not go in. If it goes in, good job. No, but seriously though, there's certain limits there. I mean, Tyler, we want him to have freedom, but it's been two shots I can say that he just, as soon as he came past half court, it didn't, he didn't need much room and he took it. I mean, he's made those shots before in high school. Uh, you have to know time and possession on those shots, but a couple times, yes. The last game he took one. Right. Uh, the ball came off a rebound and they threw it to him, and the three point line was like. Six feet ahead of him, and then he just said, "Okay, I'll take the shot." <laughs> it was right on line. It went long, and the next time out, I was like, "You know what? That was not a good shot." I don't know you remember. Were you, calling, <laughs> were you calling a play when he shot that shot? Yes, <laughs> yes. But you know what? He's hit so many big shots for us. You know, he has that freedom. But I want him to be a little smarter, for sure. Now, do those tend to come when he's trying to shoot his way out of it, or when he's overconfident? I think when he's overconfident, yeah. that's when he shoots those shots. Like, hey, I just made a couple. I want to take this one. And if I make this one, then the crowd is really going to erupt. Just don't have me erupt. <laughs> That's, that needs to be the plan. The best shooter I've played with at yeah. Memphis. Wow. Was there a shooter? Was there a pure shooter? I don't think it was just a pure shooter, but Billy Smith wasn't bad. Billy Smith, he was an athlete, but he could really shoot it. He could make open shots. He could make mid ranges, uh, mid mid range shots. Um, so he was probably the best that I can think of right. as far as making shots. Yeah, Rodney could shoot it. When he came here from uh, from Hamilton High, he uh, he could shoot it really well. Good spot up shooter, for sure. We didn't have, we haven't had a lot of great shooters in the in the program from my era up. Maybe in the past, yeah. But 